Okay, this is a video on how mufflers work. And uh, just a little background, all right. I've been interested in mufflers and exhaust systems since I was in high school. All right, uh, one day I even brought a glass pack into school. Pretty funny story. Um, but anyway, uh, most mufflers on your cars today are known as turbo style mufflers. Now that has nothing to do with you, you know, perhaps having a turbocharger or not. In fact, they actually tend to give you the least amount of performance out of any muffler design out there. And many times they're known as reverse flow mufflers. This is just a sketch of what a uh, cross section of a factory generally styled uh, turbo muffler looks like. Essentially what you have here, all right, is an inlet. Exhaust goes in through here, all right, and then uh, goes down throughout the whole muffler. Right here, uh, many factory mufflers uh, undergo a process known as constriction. With constriction, what essentially happens is that exhaust gas and sound waves that enter here get bunched up and crash into each other. And as they crash into each other, they tend to cancel each other out. Now, the next thing that happens is that it enters all right, this first chamber here. See, this is a three baffle design or a three chamber design, as you see by these like side walls. Okay. Essentially, what happens right about here is that you have now a whole bunch of openings in the pipe. They're either lovers or perforations. And let me just show you what that is. This is basically a lowered style pipe. You have a lot of things which kind of look like the outside of a cheese grater in the core of the pipe. So as air tries going this way, it gets scooped out along with sound waves. If you were to look down the core of the pipe, it would look something like this. All right, so essentially what you've done is you reduce the diameter or, you know, how wide the pipe is and also created objects that make a lot of turbulence. Now, back in the day, lovers were used a lot more than perforated designs. I'll talk about those in a minute. All right, because they were cheaper to build. They would just kind of crimp in the lovers. It was one, two, three easy. And, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is that lovers tend to make a car exhaust more quiet than a perforated core. You see, with a lover, what happens is that a large portion of sound waves get bounced out, get collided into each other, and that helps your exhaust muffle itself. Now, uh, there is some uh, debate because at certain RPMs, all right, um, sound waves kind of mix together and create new sound waves with lover designs. So in certain circumstances, lovers might actually be a little bit louder than a perforated core. But in the other side of things, you have a perforated core, okay? Basically, all this means is that you have holes drilled into the pipe. So the sound just kind of scoots through with the, with the air and just kind of exits out. There isn't really much drag. Back pressure is the term used to describe drag in an exhaust system. Back pressure means that the engine has to breathe harder. It's kind of like if you could breathe through a toilet paper roll or a straw in a race, which would you rather breathe through? All right. But anyway, back to this sketch here. What essentially happens is if you could imagine now you have a whole bunch of sound waves and air kind of scooting out all right, from these little uh, lovers or perforations. And they mix around and bounce around in the baffles. All right, and that cancels out a lot of noise. Now, what happens next with the exhaust flow is it actually has to work its way down this pipe. It gets down through here. And what essentially happens now is it actually bounces back off uh, the back wall of the muffler. All right, and uh, certain sound waves, if I can illustrate it here, basically what it looks like is you have a big sound wave and you have a, a wall and you have a sound wave coming back at it. And what will happen is they will actually uh, bounce into each other and uh, cancel each other out. All right. It's kind of hard to illustrate when I'm holding the camera at one hand. But anyway, you get the idea. All right. Now, uh, and depending on the length of this chamber and this pipe right here, you can actually tune the muffler to cancel out certain sound waves. All right. Right here, what you have is uh, in many designs usually some sort of a cup to help collect sound waves. Now other designs are different like performance turbo mufflers. A company that builds a whole bunch of performance exhaust is known as, uh, as Dynomax. And they build a, a certain type of turbo muffler known as a super turbo. And what essentially what happens is they have these little like cup shapes. And as sound goes in it ca and the exhaust rather, it kind of gets uh, curved over and help directed all right, uh, out the back of the muffler so there's no drag in the corner. Essentially what happens is sound and exhaust has to work its way across the body of the muffler and actually bypasses around uh, the, uh, the tailpipe exiting out of the muffler. It does a little kind of loop-de-loop, -loop, all right, and uh, reverses its flow. Hence, you get the term reverse flow muffler, all right, and it goes down this pipe. Uh, some designs don't even have a pipe here. They just have it as an open hole so sound can bounce around this chamber and hit the baffles, all right. But anyway... You get into this area now of the muffler, and guess what? It's a repeat of this side. It's the same idea. Instead of having exhaust going, all right, uh, front to back, now you have exhaust going from back to front. So essentially what you have is a whole bunch of sound waves kind of doing something like this with the exhaust gas, and uh, they hit this wall right here. 
Now they continue to go forward and hit this wall and then have to reverse their direction and actually flow down uh, the tailpipe. All right, they go down the tailpipe here and once again, it's another repeat story. You heard it before. Sound waves mix around and cancel out in this chamber. And then they go down all right, this pipe and then what happens here is most designs they will actually increase the diameter back up to the normal factory exhaust diameter. And this is for several reasons. Uh, one of which all right, is due to the fact all right, that um, uh, they want to make their car obviously have a decent amount of power. And if you have a, a pipe diameter that's too small the engine works harder to breathe. So in order to try to prevent any future loss of flow with the exhaust system they bring the diameter back up. But in truth, um, the honest thing is that usually the smallest part of your pipe of, your, of the exhaust system is what dictates the maximum flow rate of your exhaust system. So you can't have a pipe that's one and a half inches and then boost it up to something like five inches and expect to gain a whole lot of power. But anyway, all right, another reason why the pipe diameter goes back up right before it exits the body of the muffler is so that it actually uh, cancels out some high frequency waves. Let me try to illustrate this. You have certain high frequencies, you know, they kind of do something like this. They vibrate up and down so many times a second at higher hertz. All right, well, when they enter an area, let's say that was like one diameter, all right, and then all of a sudden it goes to a much larger diameter, all right, what will happen is they can't uh, have the same amount of energy to expand the sound wave out this large distance. The energy is actually dissipated over a larger area, and what will happen is that the high frequency waves will essentially kind of fizzle out so you don't get those really, really high annoying buzzy noises. And that's essentially all right, how, in a general uh, summary of how a muffler works, most conventional mufflers that is. All right, um, now there's several pretty cool versions of these mufflers you can buy aftermarket or as factory replacements. Um, Tonico, I think that's the proper pronunciation of the corporation, all right, owns Walker Exhaust uh, Company and they also own Dynomax. Very, very good manufacturers. Um, you can get a factory replacement muffler known as the Sound FX, which is a, a tool baffle design, um, which is a little different than the triple baffle. I'll show that. And also, um, you can get their super turbos, which incorporate, like I said, these little kind of flow directors is what they call them. These little metal pieces kind of look almost like C's that uh, help direct the exhaust flow around the muffler and reduce back pressure. But there's actually um, another feature that many um, turbo mufflers are incorporating and that's absorption, another way to cancel out sound. Um, many designs, I'd say, where that chamber was where you had a bunch of pipes with perforations or lovers in it. All right, let's see if I can get this on camera. All right, kind of looks, you know, like I said, something like this. You have the three pipes. All right, and you have, you know, all the little, you know, lovers or perforations. What they will do is they'll take a whole bunch of uh, a material similar to fiberglass, fiberglass packing, basically a sound insulation, and they'll just simply wove it around the outside, all right, of all these pipes, and essentially making like a shell of insulation around, um, you know, all these pipes. So what will happen is it would actually help absorb absorb sound waves. It's kind of like sticking your head in a pillow so you don't want to hear something. At the same time, what it does is it actually takes all right, uh, all that sound energy, it converts it over to physical energy because now all that sound, all right, has to move that fiberglass insulation. All right, and that helps make the exhaust quieter because it's basically dissipating sound energy. But another interesting feature with mufflers is they tend to be double walled. And what I mean by that is that if I was to draw, let's say, something like an oval here, all right, you have an oval, all right, which is like looking at the back of the muffler. All right, what you have is actually another wall around the muffler. So what will happen is that as the sound vibrates, it doesn't vibrate the whole muffler assembly and make more unnecessary noise. What will actually happen is that this, uh, usually almost like a little air barrier, all right, helps separate a lot of that resonance and vibration, all right, so you don't make a louder noise than what you're supposed to. Now, another interesting little feature here is clipping. Clipping is another way in which those lowers and perforations, once again, try to make an exhaust quieter. Uh, let's see if I can illustrate this. Uh, essentially, what you have here, all right, is a sound wave. Okay, you have a nice arc, all right, and uh, imagine this wave working its way down a pipe, all right. So you're kind of working it down a pipe, and uh, what you have is all, like I said, all those little holes, and the sound waves will actually kind of like get scooped up in the holes. So what you've done, if you were to try to illustrate it here, is capped off 
all right, the top of the sound waves. So you have certain frequencies that aren't heard. And also uh, that basically essentially what this section right here is, is um, what's that term they use? Um, it, it, it's, uh, you know, the loudness, the volume. I, I, it begins with an A, I believe. All right. Um, it's essentially, that's what it is. It's not altitude. I forget what it is. But uh, the idea is that amplitude, that's it. The amplitude of the sound wave is actually less now. Right. And that's uh, basically uh, how mufflers work in a simplistic model. I'll put another video up here talking about two-chamber design uh, turbo mufflers. And I'll talk about glass packs. And I'll talk about flow masters and all these different cool things, including those fart cans, later. All right. Take care.